my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. I'm Jen and this is my sewing room and so if you are new then I'm really glad that you stopped by for a little bit of Friday Sews and if you're one of the regulars you know how I love chatting with you. I'm always glad when you're here. Friday Sews. When I talk a little bit about sewing, a little bit about life, and just chat in general, I'll tell you first about the sewing that I got done this week. It wasn't very much, but it was something. It was one and a half things. <laughs> and the first thing that I got finished was Simplicity 9180. This is a gathered waist skirt. It's, I, I don't even know what to call it. It's not really a boho kind of vibe. It's more like a I don't know, like a gardening pioneer, I don't even know, stick lots of things in your pocket kind of vibe. Um, maybe Laura Ingalls, I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I love this skirt. I was originally gonna make it out of a fabric that I think was old curtains, which I thought would be really cool, but no. I just didn't like the, flat, the fabric. It had too many flaws in it and it was just not well made I guess I don't know so I didn't want to go buy fabric for it and so I pulled something out of my stash which was a polyester suiting from Joann's I had gotten it a couple of years ago and I looked at it and it's almost exactly the same as this which was completely unintentional it's kind of ironic that it worked out that way but Oh well, I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's what I had in my stash that I knew was going to work. So it did. It worked. It's a cute little skirt. Uh, and then I also worked on Simplicity 9107. I did this the other night because I had already cut it out, um, which was its own challenge. <laughs> I uh, had made this once before for my daughter McKenna. And then I had it in a makes video, I put it on, and then I gave it to her. I made it out of an old bamboo sheet because I love bamboo sheets. I buy them for our beds and I know that they don't last quite as long as a cotton sheet would, but oh my gosh, they're so soft. So when they start to wear out, I bring them into the sewing room and I cut around all the little flaws that have started to happen and I have beautiful fabric. So. I loved that top I made for her and I thought I hope oh I'm gonna see if there's enough for me to make one just like hers well it was tight it was tight it took some figuring but I did manage to cut out one for me and so uh, I couldn't sleep the other night I got up at 1 o'clock in the morning because I'd been laying there for two hours and couldn't go to sleep and I thought well this is stupid I could be sewing <laughs> so I came in and started working on it and um, I didn't have enough to line the yoke on the back which has some pleats which you can kind of see here uh, and I wanted to do that I did that on the one that I made for McKenna and so I had this very well it's not a very loose weave it's a somewhat of a loose weave cotton um, it's like a batiste I don't know maybe it was made for curtain lining or something but it's very sheer very sheer and I'm pretty sure it's all cotton it feels like all cotton or maybe cotton poly but it's probably mostly cotton so I used that to line the yoke and then I was struggling with the bias binding around the neckline and I thought well maybe I could just make a facing which would give me a very clean finish actually I think the trouble I was having was that I was tired <laughs> I should have gone to bed isn't that always the case? Like when you start making mistakes, I mean, do you do you do this where you look at yourself and you go, what am I doing? I need to, I'm too tired for this, or I am i can't concentrate on this, or whatever it is, and then you stop, and when you come back to it later, you do much better. Well, I ended up going to bed after I took off the bias binding for the second time. So my only fear is that this is gonna shrink in the wash, and I've already done the yoke, so I am terrible about pulling something out of the washer and hanging it up to dry. I'm terrible at that because I just, I forget and I just pull it all out of the washer and throw it in the dryer and I'm done. I do dry things on the appropriate settings, but I dry everything. So I don't know if I'll remember to 
not dry this. We'll see. I thought what I would do is cut a piece of this, like a yard, and throw it in the washer and, you know, like you would fabric, and pre-shrink it so that if I do run into any trouble, then I will already have alleviated that, <laughs> that potential problem. So anyway, I think I'm gonna make a facing because I think it'll give me a much cleaner finish and I'll talk about that in its own video when I talk about the skirt too. So those were the one and a half things that I accomplished this week. I did stop by Walmart and I went through, you know, the section, uh, the, the wire bins that they have where they roll up um, end cuts, I think is what they are, of fabric um, or dead stock fabric, I don't know. But they cut like two yards or four yards, sometimes three yards, and they sell them for a really discounted price. So I picked up um, three. Um, one, I couldn't believe this is a this is two yards. It was two two dollars a yard, and it's a double brushed poly. I had never uh, come across this. I've heard people talk about it about how soft it is, and oh my gosh, are they right? Yes, it is very soft, 100% polyester, but oh my goodness, it just oh, feels so good. So I have two yards of this and it has four way stretch. So this way and this way, I think this is the selvage. So it is a stripe on the cross grain, which is fine to be honest. I mean, you can always turn it and cut it on the cross grain. It is knit. So, you know, you just have to check and see, make sure that it's gonna stretch the way you want. It's not quite as much stretch this way, which would be the cross, no, the, I don't know, the regular grain. <laughs> the cross grain is gonna stretch more, but anyway. So I don't know what I'll do with this. Probably um, some kind of a top. Um, there's enough there for a little t-shirt dress, but I don't know that I wanna make a dress out of this. I think maybe it lends itself more to a top or maybe I would say a lightweight jacket, but I think it's too thin for that. I think it's more t-shirt weight, so cute top. This is an ITY, and huh, go me, I have figured out what an ITY is. Yay. <laughs> I don't know what any other kind of knit is other than the fabric content, maybe, but I know this is ITY. Um, it is a little bit slick and it's cool to the touch, so okay. I have another top, it's a ready to wear top out of like a, a crepe um, de chine. It's like, it's not crepe de chine, it doesn't, it's not shiny. It's just a, uh, like a polyester crepe. And it's this color and I wear it from time to time and my husband loves it on me. I'm not sure if it's the fabric or what, but because I've said, you like yellow on me? I mean, I'm not sure it's my color, but he says, yes, I love that top on you. Maybe it's the cut, I don't know. But anyway, I saw this. And look at the drape. Oh my gosh, look at that. So uh, probably another top. And I say that because when you're working with this stuff and you make a dress, then there's, I mean, you have to account for all the weight of the fabric of the skirt of the dress that will pull it down. And that can get tricky. So I'm thinking top. And the other one I found, oh, there are two yards of that. And then I found four yards of this. This is just a t-shirt knit. But um, what I thought this morning, I was looking through um, some pattern. I was looking through my stash of patterns and I thought, mm, I had not remembered that I had this. And so when I've when the girls have come over and gone through my patterns from time to time, they'll say, ooh, I like that one. They pick this out every time. And I thought, this fabric is perfect for this pattern. This is McCall's 7538, which I think at this point is out of print, even though it was published in 2017. But I just think the way that you could work with these stripes would really lend themselves to this, this dress. So I think I may make this for McKenna. I don't know. Uh, there are four yards of it, and that only calls for about two and a half. So, yeah, plenty there, and then maybe, you know, enough knit for something else. So that'll be nice. The only other thing I bought was from Hobby Lobby. I went in and actually bought fabric off the bolt. Can you believe that? I never do that. I'm always buying sheets or remnants or, you know, whatever. Anyway, 
so I've been uh, thinking about Macaw 7831, which is a jumper. Yes, we call it a jumper here in the U.S., not a pinafore. And we call them sweaters, not jumpers. But that's because we're here in the U.S. I don't, you know, what, whatever your name for it, that's what this is. Um, and I have been overthinking this, thinking uh, I don't want corduroy where I live because I live in a tropical climate and I don't want, it would be too hot. Um, and I wanted a denim, but I wanted a jeans weight denim. And I, I thought, I am overthinking this. This is ridiculous. And then I started thinking, you know, home deck fabric is the weight probably that I want, depending on the one I find. So I found this one. This is just a home deck. It feels almost like canvas. And I think it's going to work great for this little jumper. I really do. I think it's going to be perfect. Um, I don't know if they've lined it. I did. I'm sure they have not because it's just not enough pieces that would need lining. But I might do that just to stiffen it up. I don't know. You know me and lining. I line everything. So anyway, so I found that and I thought with a little navy t-shirt under it, it would be really cute. And I don't. I have a navy t-shirt, but I could always make one. And I know I have a couple of t-shirt patterns. One is an indie. T-shirt patterns are so prevalent across, uh, you know, indie patterns. And they're always free. So maybe I'll find one of those. If you have a favorite, let me know what it is. And maybe I'll try that. Okay, so that's all the sewing. Before I go on, I want to say this. I say I didn't get very much sewing done. And... For me, I didn't because my time is my own. I don't have a full-time job. I don't have people to take care of. I don't have little kids. I don't have teenagers. I don't have any of those things. I have all the time in the world to come in and sew. But I remember the days when I had five kids, five little girls under four, wait, Five under five was what it was, yeah. The twins had not turned five yet, and Michaela was pretty new. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh. I think about that time now, and I, I don't know how I slept, let alone sewed. But I have such a love for the craft, and it did keep me sane back then. So I had little kids. There was a time when they were in middle school um, and elementary school when I worked full time. And I didn't have time or space to sew. I did here and there, but it waited for me and I came back to it. When they were in high school, they were busy all the time. And when I wasn't taking them somewhere, I was teaching them to drive, which is its own set of horrors. <laughs> and I was so glad when the last one learned to drive. I thought, oh, thank you, God. I don't have to do that again. Anyway, so, you know, that was a busy time. And now as we get older, you know, we have grandchildren and sometimes there are those of us who have to care for grandchildren while um, our children work for a living or, you know, there are other circumstances sometimes when you have to raise a grandchild. My brother is raising his granddaughter. Or there are physical limitations that we run into because our bodies start falling apart, don't they? Uh, for me, I have trigger finger, which is where... Uh, I won't explain it, but it's, you know, it's something that I deal with as I've gotten older and I need my hands. So it's, uh, yeah, I have to pay attention to that. These are all things that would limit you from sewing. And so to be able to say, I got something done, I got one and a half things done and it only took me two months. For some of us, that's a huge accomplishment, huge and for me, I have the time and the ability to go in and sew anytime I want. So for me to say that, it's like, it doesn't seem like very much. So it's a relative thing. I just want to make that clear. It's a relative thing. I never want to sound presumptuous or like, yeah, I got 50 things done this week, which by the way is never going to happen. But, you know, we all work at our own pace based on what we can do. I, I mean, people would look at me in the past and go, how did you do five kids? Oh my gosh. And I think, well, because, you know, that's what I could handle. Um, some people can handle three kids. Some people can't ha handle any kids. So it's all what you can do. You know, you just, um, it's a relative term. 
everybody's situation is different. And I don't want you to ever think that I presume that that's just not very much sewing that I got done. So anyway, okay. So that, I wanted to say that and now on to life. I have lost my mind. I am thinking about doing something that I said I would never do again. Uh, I bought a new sofa and it replaced my old sofa. My old sofa was just a regular one and it sat under the window and there was a space next to it between it and the door to the lanai where I had an end table. That end table was great because when I would go to walk out to the lanai, whether I was gonna serve dinner out there or I was gonna take my laptop out there and you know sit, I always had so many things in my hands and it was such a great place to be able to set something down and open the door when that end table was there. Well, the end table's gone now because I got a new sofa. So I was thinking, how do I solve that problem? Well, a sofa table. I love sofa tables. I love them back behind a sofa. I think they just, I, I just like them. Well, I have one but it's under the television, holding all the television stuff, like the sound bar and I don't know, various other electronic things. So that's not gonna work. So I was thinking, hmm, I'll go shopping. And I did, and I found things, but I didn't find anything I liked for the price that I want to pay. Mm. Well, here's the thing. That sofa, that brand new one I got, came on a pallet and it's in the garage and I've looked at it and it's a decent size to where I know I could make the size table that I want. I said, after I made my coffee table, I never want to do woodworking again. It was such a huge learning curve. Oh my gosh. I thought it was a lot more like sewing than it is really measuring is about where the similarities end between sewing and woodworking. I don't have a shop. I don't have a lot of the tools that make it easier. So I just thought, no, I'm not doing that again. It took me forever to finish and no. And then I needed a barn door because the barn doors were gonna be so frightfully expensive. And I needed a door on this room. And so I, <laughs> I said, all right, I'll make it. And I did. And it was less of a learning curve. Um, a little bit hard to get everything squared up because it's hard it's if you don't do it all the time and you don't have all the right tools it's just hard but it wasn't that hard but it was also the height of summer and it was 100 degrees outside so that made it hard but i got it done and of course again i said now that's all the woodworking i'm done and then i decided i need a sofa table you know, if I use that pallet out there, it'll be free. And it's not the pallet like I was gonna use for my coffee table, which ended up being the hardest oak that you can possibly make anything out of. I got it at an Amish pallet factory, and I don't know how those guys put that thing together if they had machines that were like industrial strength. I mean, I, I ended up taking a piece of it to Home Depot and saying, what is this? I can't get anything to screw into it, nail into it. Is this from space? <laughs> <laughs> this guy looked at me and he said, no, it's just hard oak. And he explained it. And so this pallet out in the garage is not that. So uh, I'll have better luck, I'm sure. But I did text uh, McKenna and Mia, who are my two DIY kids. And they live fairly close. They live about three hours away. So I said, can you come help me? And they said, yeah, we'll be happy to do that. So... I'm gonna have help and the learning curve is less because it's basically a variation, a taller, longer version of my coffee table. So I've kind of done it before, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I'm questioning as to whether I've completely lost my mind because I am not Sherry from Granny's Sewing Room who built a chicken coop, a chicken coop. She has a video about it. I can't believe she did that and I am not that, but I think I am going to give it a try. Oh, well, we'll see how that goes. So that's everything. Uh, I have all kinds of ideas for uh, new sewing projects. And of course, it's like I want to make all the things right now. <laughs> and I know if you're in lockdown, you're probably feeling the same way. And that can be overwhelming because you think, oh, gosh, I want to sew something. Oh, there's so many things. What do I pick? Yeah, just pick something. It won't matter. Um, I hope you're not losing your mind if you're in lockdown. 
I hope you're not losing your mind if you're homeschooling your children. Yes, because I kicked one out. Yeah, I did homeschool my kids for a very short time and I couldn't get Mia to learn to read. She just cried all the time. So I kicked her out and I sent her to public school. <laughs> Oh my goodness. What kind of kid are you that you get kicked out of homeschool? I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, I uh, I think that's about it. So have a great weekend. And that's it for now for me. See you next time. Thanks for watching. I had to add a little PS onto this video because Friday Sews is catching on. You got to go watch Stephanie from Stephanie Feral Focus and Kristen at the Dahlia Society and... Hales from Hales More Sewing. I am just over the moon that I have at least three more people to watch and watch their catch-ups from the previous week and all the things that they're doing on into next week and just what they're sewing in general and also about life. I love that. I hope you love that too. So make sure that you do a search on YouTube for hashtag Friday Sews. One word, Friday Sews. And I hope more people on YouTube will do it. Let's all go enjoy. Yay!